pizza salad, cilantro, lime, chicken, and it's got this great dressing. That tasted just like the old fashioned tomatoes. a big government handout? My wife and I wanted to retire comfortably on our own terms, with our own money. And we did. With our own perfect retirement business. Oh, that's good. We discovered this retirement income secret through collecting an extra $825 a week. That's over $40,000 a year. That gives us a lot more room to make our retirement great. So while other Americans are retiring on $12,000, we're planning our next trip. It's the American retirement dream. All thanks to our perfect retirement business. Want to learn the secret to a perfect retirement business that can earn you $825 a week or more? To find out how you can claim your free guide, go to perfectretirementincome.com. But this offer is limited to a select number of people. So I bet it now. is. For more details, go to perfectretirementincome.com today. That's perfectretirementincome.com. He's Northwest grown and proud of it. Mars Larson, live and local. Today we need Talk Radio 570 KBI. I just saw on Twitter. The one where do I were um, offering love to capitalism and trying to sell products on the station, keeping us alive. I always go back and I'm doing research. I found this picture on Twitter. I just retweeted it from my personal account, so if you are a follower of mine, you'll see it. And I've asked Kevin to look at the KVI account to retweet it out KVI. Young woman holding a sign. I'm not sure I'm not sure from where. But it's in three parts. Upper left is I disagree with. She has the Klan, the Nazis, the hammer and sickle, the raised punch black fist, and two other symbols, which I, oh, um, one is an airplane going 9-11. It's going to the Twin Towers. And then another symbol I'm not sure about, but there are six symbols. I disagree with, and that's the top upper left half of her son. On the right-hand side, she says, I support free speech for... And she repeats the six symbols, the Nazis, the Communists, Black Lives Matter, etc. Then the bottom of the sign says, because I believe in, that's the American flag. I love this picture. I've, I've loved it. I retweeted it. I disagree with the Klan, the Nazis, the Communists, Black Lives Matter, radical terrorists. I support free speech for them because I believe in the American flag. Because, see, my friends, that's what this country used to stand for. That's what we used to believe in. That's what the Constitution said. Free speech. And now I'm seeing people say, well, you know, I'm not so sure that liberals, the left, I'm not so sure that we really should be talking about um, both. Uh, we, we should be talking about all this. I, I just, free speech has to be limited. No, I don't think so. Public has it, yeah. I mean, the court recognizes there's certain limitations for speech. Mm -hmm. But free political speech, you should be free to believe in what you believe in. Mm -hmm. You should be free to express that without fear or intimidation or violence or government control. You should be able to be able to say that. And yet we sometimes see people, the ACLU has been getting a lot of grief from people because they stood up and said, those people in Charlottesville had a right to the march. They had a permit. They had a right to march. And all of a sudden, they're being criticized. People are threatening with all support. But they don't. That doesn't mean they... The, the government... It's the government that's not supposed to stop them from marching. It's not the people. The people are allowed to get their voices heard also. Both sides get heard. Now, 
perhaps, I think it was more like 40 years ago. That was like the late 70s. Now, for those of you out there who think Nazis in America are a threat, think about that for just a moment. 40 years ago or so, late 70s, they had an organized march by the American Nazi Party through Skokie, Illinois, mm -hmm. a neighborhood inhabited by a lot of Jewish folks and some of them being survivors of the Holocaust. He said he went to court and said, they have a right to march here. They're Americans. Forty years later, we have a march of 700 of them in Charlottesville. There have been, to my knowledge, no major marches or demonstrations by American Nazis between real American Nazis between 1979 and 2017. What does that tell you about how strong Nazis are in this country? There are a lot of marches by the left, well, the WTO, the inauguration, not just of President Trump, but of others. There are countless left-wing demonstrations promoting violence, confrontation with the police, harassment of opponents, uh, destruction of property, on and on and on. Antifa is what they do. The anarchists is what they do. Not anarchists. Don't tie them together. We're not anarchists, we're not anarchists you motherfucker. And yet, when was the last time you said anti fascist does not mean anarchist. Hmm. Hmm. Certainly not with the frequency. Certainly not with the. Means we're against the corporatocracy, you bastard. To anti fascists, to the anarchists, to the people that destroy property, to the people that throw urine filled bottles at the police. But you know, the president was wrong to say there was moral equivalency here between these two groups. Hmm, I don't think he was. And the problem is people on the left just can't seem to bring it to themselves. To criticize the left. Like there are no enemies to the left. We can explain it away. We can excuse it. They've been oppressed. They've been picked on. They're, they get, uh, you know, youthful exuberance. They get carried away too far. They can always excuse it. Hmm. Think about that. Coming up here at 1117 here on Talk Radio 570 KML. Let's talk about Kill Mortgage, can we? Sponsor of the show. If you're out in the market right now, you know how competitive... ...to uh, the Trump presidency than he ever did uh, to the Obama presidency. And that is something that is not going to sit well with Republican voters. You will rise, Republicans in Congress will stand or fall on whether the Trump president stands or falls. 1-800-282-2882. Mark Stein in for us. We'll take your calls straight up. This summer, when you're away on vacation, take Rush with you. A monthly membership to Rush 24-7 brings America's Anchorman and the EIB network to your laptop, tablet, or smartphone. Wow. Podcast, archives, and Potato Cam for less than seven bucks a month. That's Rush 24-7 at RushLimbaugh.com. You're listening to the EIB Network. Right. Um. There is a common assumption about identity that a lot of people believe it's just credit card fraud, but that is not the only form of identity theft. There are cases of information being sold on the dark web, or somebody getting an online payday loan in your name. And good thing there's LifeLock, folks. They use proprietary technology to detect and alert you on a wide range of identity threats. If you have a problem, the U.S.-based identity restoration specialist will work the system. No one can prevent all identity theft or monitor all transactions and all businesses. Join right now and get a special 15% discount off the first year of your LifeLock membership. Call 800-440-4833. Or go to lifelock.com and use the promo code RUSH15. That's RUSH15. That's how you save 15% off your first year. The offer ends on the 27th of August. Terms apply 800-440-4833. Hi, I'm Eric, a student at Hilldale College. Here is President of Hilldale College, Dr. Larry Arn, on natural rights versus entitlement. America was founded on the idea that human beings are born with natural rights, such as the rights to life, liberty, and property. A person who holds this view of rights makes no demands on others except that they respect those rights. Today, however, many Americans talk about rights to a college education, state-of-the-art medical care, and 
leaving birth to come to us. These are rights understood as entitlements, and a person who holds this view of rights, far from making no demands on other people, is making claims on other people's money and resources. This understanding of rights not only sets citizens against each other, but it undermines the whole idea of natural rights. This Constitution Minute was brought to you by Hillsdale College. To receive a free pocket Constitution and Declaration, go to constitutionminutes.com. Probably not. And another great you want to keep listening but won't be near a radio, take Michael Nightman with you. Download the AM770 KTTH app in your Apple or Android app store or at KTTH.com. The AM770 KTTH app where you listen to conservative talk radio anytime, anywhere. All-Star Auto Glass repairs and replaces auto glass. You get free car washes from Brown Bear. Find them online. Call allstar.com. Call allstar.com. Hey, Medheads, did you know Tub Cove has completed nearly 50,000 tub and shower area remodels in its 45-year history? Wow, this is Michael Medved recommending a local one-day bathroom makeover company and it's your complete started, source for beautiful bathroom and shower renovations. Don't just take my word for it. 11, Check out Tub Cove reviews 06. online and also at tubcove.com. Here is the Tub Cove now company. Left hand to completely starts redo at your bathroom shower area. Just That's it for my son and they'll do it for less than $6,000. That so includes a new tub seconds. and shower mixing valves, seamless wall surround and glass doors. Of course, it's a lot less if you do some of the work yourself or you only need a partial makeover. So when they're competitors give you a ten to fifteen thousand dollar quote remember tub cove because those competitors only make tub cove look good please call tub cove to save money with a free and firm quote at 206-522-1711 call now 206-522-1711 so albertson's had here's a minute right there albertson's had the same generic food as safeway signature brand interesting Three scheduled maintenance, custom exhaust, certified emissions repair, and more. Bucky's is proud to offer high quality Bardol additives and lubricants to keep your vehicle at peak performance. Bucky's, the largest local family owned auto repair company in the Northwest. Stop by any of Bucky's 16 locations from Everett to Tacoma to Bremerton. No appointment needed. For locations and savings, visit Bucky's.com. From the online trading account studio, this is AM 770 KTTA. <laughs> Mark Stein for us. Let's go to Ben in uh, Florida in uh, Hobie Sound. Is that how you say the name of the, the town, Ben? Hobie Sound. Hobie Sound. Oh, terribly. Sorry. So I didn't mean to put on it. Hobie Sound. Yeah. No Indians down here. No, okay. I'm sorry. I, I thought I was giving it an astute uh, French pronunciation. I apologize. Yeah, there you go. But I think one of the things you miss is that people every day watch it for entertainment. I mean, a lot of the stuff they've done, 9-11 was the kind of content you put in a PG-13 movie. I mean, right. you know, I ran the, the New York Daily Post that the average adult watches five hours of TV a day. That means if you work nine till five, you watch TV a so ten, and most of it's just this violent garbage. So I think that explains why people just can't emotionally react with disgust or disdain for terrorism. Well, you you make a good point because at the time of 9/11, there was a Schwarzenegger film. I can't remember the name of it, and I think they eventually ended up actually just not uh, releasing it. But there was a poster that was. Uh, on the New York subway at the time of 9-11 for this Schwarzenegger film and it looked actually like what happened on 9 -11. if you remember that scene of 9-11 of people running through the streets of lower Manhattan mm -hmm. with the big cloud of dust behind it the Schwarzenegger right. movie poster actually looked like that and the interesting thing about 9-11 is when you think of so many of the uh, iconic images of that day uh, is how they do look like big Hollywood motion picture things. Of course, now with the CGI, they can do it even e e even more easily. And if, if, you, if, if you remember, uh, the Prime Minister of Malaysia, uh, Dr. Mahatsha Mohammed, Dr. Mahatsha uh, actually said 
uh, he came to the conclusion that 9-11 was a fake that the Americans had done because he said if they can do Avatar, they can do anything. So Dr. Mahatch actually went to watch Avatar and concluded that 9-11 must have been an inside job uh, because if you can do Avatar, Why you're certainly you capable of arranging to have uh, dust in the screen. So you're not wrong, Ben, that uh, in, in a sense, uh, the, the more... Uh, the, the more fantastically violent our entertainment gets, it must have some kind of desensitizing element to uh, seeing scenes of rubble in western cities or whatever. That, that, uh, that's basically the point you're making. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, I, I, mean, if you were, I mean, if you were to put 9-11 footage into a movie, people not, might not even recognize it. No, the only thing yeah. that's the only thing that's missing is, uh, is is the soundtrack music. And if you recall, Michael Moore, when he did his Fahrenheit 911, he concluded with the scene of the plane slicing through the second tower, uh, and he overlaid it with Louis Armstrong singing "What a Wonderful World." So, in actual fact. Uh, basically, and, and what was interesting about that, by the way, was that, that that scene of the plane just slicing through the tower does actually look the way uh, somebody uh, like James Cameron would do it on a movie. He wouldn't, he, he'd dispense with the first three shots because the plane came in at the wrong angle or whatever, and he'd go for the one where it just comes in at the perfect angle. And you're, and, and in, in that sense, um, you, you, you act, that's actually quite a shrewd point, that we watch this for entertainment, and then so to be, to expect us suddenly to accept it as the reality of our lives is, is a, a difficult leap to make. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a, that's a, that's a, uh, that's a good point, uh, Ben. Thanks, thanks for your, uh, thanks for your call. One of the, uh, one of the interests, just to explore that a little, I, I, I think there's some truth in that. The interesting thing to me about the other kind of terrorism, the low-level thing, where some car just goes up on the sidewalk and kills a bunch of people, in some senses that's more vivid, in part because it's it's too messy and chaotic to have the uh, the precision of Hollywood. You know, when we talk about this, uh, I thought the most interesting line in the president's speech was. Another fundamental pillar of our new strategy is the integration of all instruments of American power, diplomatic, economic, and military, toward a successful outcome. And this, if he means it, this is the most important line in the speech, because to deal with the thing, uh, you can't just go to... The military is just one instrument of national power, and you have to go to war with the other elements of that national power, one of which is, as I've said, waging war on the ideology. You cannot have a uh, you cannot have a situation where you just like send uh, bombers in to bomb villages, boom, 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 and then expect that uh, cumulatively to accomplish anything. We are engaged in an ideological struggle against an ideology that wants to destroy. Uh, not just the Western world, it wants to ultimately destroy Chinese civilization, Asian civilization. It wants eventually to supplant all alternatives. And so you actually have to take on that ideology and be prepared to take that on. And this idea that you can just have precision military strikes, but you never identify the enemy, you're never honest about the enemy's motivation, is one reason why it's gone on for 16 years in Afghanistan to such little purpose. In the end, you have to drive a stake through the ideology. We didn't sit around worrying about, uh, you know, which Nazis were good Nazis and which Nazis were bad Nazis. We decided to denazify that if you were a Nazi, you were part of the problem. And we're not, we're not prepared to do that. And that has consequences. For example, uh, the guy who killed 50 gays in Orlando. He supported the Taliban and his father supported the Taliban. And because the son was violent, we revile him, but we give a pass to the father who did not shoot up the nightclub. He supports the Taliban and he gets to stand behind Hillary Clinton at a Democrat rally. It's the ideology. Are you happy with your current job?